One question I'm often asked about are the statues in our church, who they are and what they represent. For those of you who are not Catholic, we Catholics don't worship statues, we don't worship saints, we only worship God. Statues represent the holy men and women who are in heaven with God, and so when we see a statue, we recall their lives, and we are reminded that we too are called to holiness. And all the statues in our church represent various states in life and vocations by which one can become a saint. And so I'll go through each of the statues and tell you who the saint is and what they represent. So first of all, we begin with St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. She was a 19th century Carmelite nun in Lisieux, France. She's known for her little way, and she was also declared a doctor of the church. She represents religious women, particularly nuns. We have two young women from our parish who became Carmelite nuns, and so they dress just like St. Therese in this statue as a Carmelite nun. Going into the sanctuary around the altar, we have several saints. The first is St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscan order, and so he represents founders of religious orders. He also represents deacons because he himself was a deacon. Next to St. Francis is St. Leo the Great. St. Leo the Great was known for repelling Attila the Hun in 452, and also known for his tome, the Council of Chalcedon, in which he defined the two natures of Christ, both human and divine, united in one divine person. Next to St. Leo the Great is St. John Vianney. He represents saints who are secular priests, because he was a secular priest, and he is the patron saint of parish priests. Next to St. John Vianney is St. Louis IX of France. The only French king was a canonized saint. He represents the vocation of marriage. He was married to Margaret of Provence, and they had 13 children, two of whom died in infancy. He also represents leaders, who are saints. Going to the altar itself, above the altar, is our patron saint, St. Andrew. St. Andrew was the proto-apostle, the first called, the first apostle. His brother was St. Peter, and it was to Peter that Andrew went and said, we have found the Messiah. Next to St. Andrew on the other side of the altar is St. Philomena. St. Philomena represents virgins and martyrs who are saints. She was martyred under Diocletian for her Christian faith. They tried to martyr her in several ways, one of which was by drowning. They tied an anchor to her. It didn't work. They eventually decapitated her. Next to St. Philomena is St. Vincent de Paul. He represents founders of religious congregations. Congregation is different than a religious order. He founded the Congregation of the Mission, what we call the Vincentians, and he also founded the Daughters of Charity. Next to St. Vincent de Paul is St. Patrick, the Apostle of Ireland. He represents bishops who are saints. Next to St. Patrick, is St. Anthony of Padua, known for his preaching and miracles. He represents religious priests, priests who are members of religious orders. And finally, the very last saint I will be showing you is St. Rose of Lima. St. Rose was the first canonized saint of the New World. She was a third order Dominican. So she represents members of third orders. She was also a virgin. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour 
of our saints, the saints of our sanctuary. And I ask God to bless all of you, and may you have peace in these days.